Hey, what's going on, guys? We're back to another video. Today, I'm going to review TMNT, which came out back in 2007, and it's the fourth TMNT film ever made. So, if you saw my most top ten under a comic book films list, you saw this at, like, I think number eight or number nine. I think number eight. So, you might still be thinking, Spider-Man, no, does it still hold up? Does it still deserve to be on that list? And the answer is yes. This is still an under a comic book film, and... In my opinion, it's the second best TMNT film since the original. I say second best because the original is obviously the best. This is the second best, so it's probably the best TMNT film since the original. I'm sure some will agree with me or some will disagree with me, but I would say most will agree with me that this is an underrated TMNT film and it deserves to be the best one since the original. So, let's talk about the design. So, I want to... About the last movie, I complained about how designs look like shit, and this, they look awesome. Honestly, you might know that it's not live action, it's animation, and I think because they thought the turtles would never work in live action anymore, thanks to the next mutation and the third film and those god-awful VHS music videos and that blue line thing, because how just awful the designs were. So they probably thought, like, oh, the animation will work better. And the animation, I think I'm glad this film was animated because the turtle designs look a lot better, and this does fit more like an animated film instead. And this was a theatrical release, unlike Turtles Forever, and I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I say this one's sort of a reboot. Some people might say it's in continuity with the first four films, I think some people say that because I have a DVD with this film and all four films, and yeah, so that's how I got the original trilogy on DVD, along with this film, so it came with this film along, so it had all four Turtles movies, so some people might say, oh, it's in continuity, because I think some people will say that because they have the Shredder's helmet from the first movie, and the cracked ooze bottle with in the second movie, Secret of the Ooze, and in the, the Asian Japan time traveling pin in the third I think some people just say that, but I would say they're most likely Easter eggs and they're not in the same universe. I say this is more of a reboot, because I don't think any, I don't, th I don't think they could think of a Turtles movie after the third one, instead of just reboot it. It would be better off if they just rebooted it. So that's a good thing that they rebooted it, but it, I would have loved to see a fourth Turtles movie with that universe, but after the third one, huh. But I am glad this film was made, because this is an underrated film. And there was actually going to be a trilogy. Um, The, the second film was going to be about like uh, Michelangelo leaving his brothers because they didn't take him seriously. And he would join the Foot Clan, and he would ha have a black bandana. And the third film was going to be about the Triceratons. So, yeah. I would have liked to see the trilogy. I think that would be better than the Michael Bay movies, which we'll get to later. Like, tomorrow. Ugh. So, in my opinion, I would say this is the last good TMNT film. Well, it's been a while since I watched the Michael Bay movies, but I'll tell you if they're good or not. Some people say they're good, but we'll talk about them later. Let's go back to TMNT. So, I don't really have a lot to say about TMNT other than it's just an underrated film, and it's really good. And it's actually probably the shortest TMNT film ever, because this felt like 42 minutes long. I'm not joking. This is probably... It's probably like an hour and 42 minutes, maybe? I don't know. Actually, it's at an hour and 20, hour and 20 minutes, because this film is really short. Like, I felt like I was watching it for 42 minutes. That's how long it felt for me. I think I just really enjoyed it. it of course, it kept, it felt safe. Like, I think because they were trying to not screw it up, like, the last film, so they wanted to keep it safe for this reboot. So, I understand for that. Like, I like it. And let's talk about the voice acting and all the... Uh, Oh, wait, 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 let's go back to the designs, because I think I forgot. Okay, like I said, the turtle designs are awesome. And I want to talk about um the villain a little bit. Um, the villain is not the Shredder, because he's actually dead in this. So, they do show an image of what Shredder was probably going to look like. But I would say, because there was a video game called Team and T Smash Up, and it had these turtle designs along with Shredder. But in that game, Shredder had a 2003 design. So I'm guessing Shredder would have looked like his 2003 design in 3D, and that would probably would have been awesome, and they probably would have gotten the 2003 to 2003 Shredder voice actor, and that'd be pretty awesome. Except, and the difference would be he's not a new trauma actor, he'll be human, but that's okay. We at least get the badass voice acting, and that cool laugh, and the badass look. So, yeah, I would have loved to see Shredder in the, um, the in 3D in this universe film. Too bad the second, the other two films weren't made. So let's talk about the voice acting. Oh my god, I love the voice acting. There's so many familiar voice acting. Let's talk about Leonardo. Leonardo is voiced by, um, I forgot the voice actor's name, but he voices Spider-Man in Sp Lego Marvel Superheroes and Spider-Man Friend or Foe, and he voices Electro in the Ultimate Spider-Man game. And basically, and also, 
and it's cool, cool, cause especially when he fights Raph, cause Raph is another other than voiced by Nolan North, aka Deadpool. So basically, when they fight Leo and Raph, it's like you could say it's like a Spider Man versus Deadpool fight, and that's pretty cool, cause you get like a, a voice actor who voices Spider Man, a voice actor who voices Deadpool, so that's pretty cool. And we get Kevin Michael Richardson as always. He's 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 voiced for a lot of familiar voice acting. We all know that. He's a famous voice actor. And Casey Jones is voiced by none other than Chris Evans, a.k.a. Captain America. <laughs> My God, a lot, of, a lot of Marvel familiar voice actors. Like, that's weird. Like, it was, this is funny. Well, this was before the MCU existed a year. But that was that's pretty weird now since he having Casey Jones be voiced by Captain America. That's just, that's just funny and weird. <laughs> and... I'm trying to think of other voice act, the other familiar voice actors before I get to Splinter, because I want to save him for last. Oh yeah, the villain. Um, well, I forgot his name, but he's not really a villain. It's revealed he's kind of a hero. It's just the people who he's working with were evil, like they're were stone creatures or something. They're they were the e the bad people. So that the person who's who people thought was a villain but was revealed to be a hero is voiced by Patrick Stewart. So Charles Xavier. So we got Leonardo as voices by Spider Man, Raphael voiced by Deadpool, Casey Jones voiced by Captain America, and the the guy who believe who's believed to be a villain but ends up being a hero is voiced by Charles Xavier. That's awesome. We got a bunch of Marvel characters voiced by TMNT. That's pretty cool. And let's save Master Splinter for last, because he is none other than voiced by Aku from Samurai Jack. God rest the voice actor's soul. He did a, a great job as Master Splinter. I wish he was he still here, because in a PlayStation 2 game, he didn't voice Master Splinter, because he sadly passed away. And I would have liked to have him come back. At, I wish he was still around to, have, to voice Aku, because he did a phenomenal job as Aku from Samurai Jack. So that's all I gotta say about the voice acting. I hope the, uh, yeah. So I really don't know what to say after the voice acting because I think that's all I wanted to say about the film since there's not a lot to talk about. <sighs> well, I think that's it really for me because there's not a lot to talk about other than it's an underrated team and T film and it probably deserved a sequel. It was going to get a sequel but it got canceled and we got the shitty Michael Bay movies instead. Why? I don't know. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, the theme song. I forgot the theme song. The theme song is badass. I love the theme song. It fits TMNT. It feels like they were going to go more back to a comic book route instead of that goofiness with the cartoon. So, I like that. I like that a lot. But it's a shame that the second film and the third film weren't made. <sighs> so, yeah, in my opinion, this is the last good TMNT film. Unless you want to count Turtles Forever. So, basically, t this film, or Turtles Forever, is the last good team and T film. So, my final verdict for this film is a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece, an underrated masterpiece, and it deserves the love and respect it gets. I recommend you go watch it. You'll have, you won't have a bad time watching it. If you don't think it's a masterpiece, you'll still feel satisfied how it ended. And you'll still feel more satisfied, like, more satisfying than the Turtles 3 ending. So, you'll feel more satisfied if this was more of a the third film. Or if this was in the same universe. Because if it was in the same universe as the original trilogy, it probably would have been a satisfying conclusion. A lot better. So I guess, yeah, I would say some parts have similarities, but some don't. So yeah, everyone, 10 out of 10. So I gotta say, everyone, thank you guys for watching. Matt here.